So I guess you guys have got your wish, a lot of you, that you want to see me making a couple more anti-SJW videos lately, just because I know a lot of you like that stuff. Now, I thought, even though I'm a bit late with this, I'd turn it into a bit of a topic. So, of course, you guys probably saw Alex Jones went on a panel live stream with the Jeremy twins, uh, Jeremy from The Quartering and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers and a whole host of other anti-SJW popular YouTubers. Now, for me and for a lot of people, this is very unsurprising, but to get some like proper unhinged lunatic on your live streams and stuff while you nod along with pretty much everything he says proves to a lot of people who maybe it wasn't apparent to, these guys do have hard right-wing politics and these figures, are, in my mind, are all very political. Now, they might just say they like covering like pop culture and nerd culture, but I feel like, you know, there is an overall grift going on, but these people do view the world through this very, for me at least, as a British person, a far-right lens, because I believe American conservatism is a far-right ideology at this point. And I feel like their takes on pop culture stuff is dangerous, in my opinion, for indoctrinating people more in this ideology that has become more conspiratorial as Trump's entered the picture, figures like Alex Jones, who obviously, you know, used to be kind of associated with Donald Trump. So today, what I just wanted to show you, I guess, was maybe a clip or two from the live stream, talk about that, and then to talk about the, I guess, political ecosystem of these channels in that most of them do also have a politics channel, which often isn't too different with the topics it covers, but then just has like straight up politics as well. I'm gonna plug my social media and Patreon for about a minute, so skip that stuff if you're not interested. Before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if, you know, you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. For every 5k, we get a new chocolate orange. Help me get about two more before the end of the year, I hope. Also, I live stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday. And all of that stuff is archived on the Cavernacle Extra, and that is my second channel. So an anti-SJW um, nerd channel called Nerd Rotic hosts like a, I guess, a weekly live stream, maybe a monthly live stream, and he has like a panel show. So this one had like people I said, like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Kinnell from Geeks and Gamers, and The Quartering, um, obviously another Jeremy, and some other people that I don't really recognize, but I assume they're you know quite like-minded if they're all on this channel together. Now, Alex Jones was on for a long time, and you guys can go check that out if you actually are interested. Now, the one thing I will say, and it's pretty common with bigger channels, a lot of the things Alex Jones said in this video, and a lot of the things these guys were talking about, if you're a smaller channel, YouTube is probably gonna flag your content and probably remove your video. And there's a reason Alex Jones has been deplatformed in the first place, because he literally has broken every terms of service. Now, I found a couple clips where Alex Jones specifically talks about Hollywood more in the wheelhouse of the guys present. Now, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers asked him, when did Hollywood go woke? And Alex Jones' answer is just like, really crazy as you expect and also very easy to debunk i mean the one thing a lot of us uh kind of what we talk about here on this show and what our, our world is the wokeness of hollywood and, and, and everything and, and the question i get asked and all of us get asked and i'm interested in your perspective on this where did it really start now obviously that that's a date that's a deep question for someone like you but where did it really start to show the the cracks and the wokeness of hollywood in your opinion yeah that's a complex cultural question 
Mm. Uh, and so it's really hard to give an accurate question. But I would say Hollywood was already collapsing by the time Obama got there. And then he was sold as like a Hollywood commodity. They bring humanity together, save everybody. And Americans wanted to really, you know, stop racism. And then when he became a divider and a manipulator and people saw Hollywood pushing him, it began to really crumble. And then when you have the Internet, you know what? You know what killed Hollywood is the Internet. Because, because, and, and mainline television. So it's the internet and all these choices in Hollywood and big tech and, and legacy dinosaur media, they all were like, oh, no one will care about that. We'll still control it. We'll get some talent out of it like minor leagues, but we'll still be the dominant force. But then with Netflix and with Amazon and all these channels flooding bad productions, flooding bad actors, flooding wokeness, mm -hmm. as soon as Hollywood began to realize Five, six years ago, they were losing control. <clears throat> a day late, a dollar short. Then they go, okay, weaponize it and divide and conquer them and make them tune into it because it's political and hateful. But then that drove more people away. For, and so, okay, we'll take over late night comedy. Take over the nightly shows. Take over sports. It was the beginning and end of Hollywood. And then once people in Hollywood realized it was a big burnout, destroyed crater in a bowl with toxic waste, basically huffing poisonous fumes, and then all the drugs, everything burned their brains out. They're just like, this place sucks. The money sucks. The Mercedes sucks. The people are empty. This is soulless. So all the Hollywood people fleeing themselves ran to Canada and Texas and you know Tennessee and Florida and everywhere else. And so people figured out, oh, my God, this is poison. This isn't good. This was used to make us vapid and, and, and stupid and, 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 and very, very shallow. Uh, it didn't just be, die, it became like a negative commodity, like a rotting corpse mm. in your living room, and now it's this reanimated stinking zombie walking around crapping on itself, and now its own tech people are like, we're going to spell on everybody's iPhones and their photos, and they're looking at ours, and they're making us give them our iPhone, and my boss told me about it, my naked wife and my camera roll. Well, wait, I thought I was supposed to be the ruling class. I was supposed to be the movie star. <laughs> and now they, always, they all realize it's empty, total crap and it's not just a zero hollywood is a negative like trash mm. you've got to pay to get rid of so as soon as their image machine and as soon as they being in love with themselves finally died it was dangerous because that was their identity now since they don't love us anymore and since we can't mesmerize them let's just wreck everything and bring them down with us mm -hmm. that's it <laughs> part of why hollywood uh, to p bounce off what alex is saying Hollywood felt like they could control culture before with these movies. And, you know, I mean, like Friends, the TV show, everyone had the same freaking haircut as Ross. Yeah. And everyone had the same haircut as Jennifer Aniston. People stopped looking up to them. So then they became political they activists. speaking like them, Jeremy. Right. Yeah, yeah they used yeah. the same yeah. words. Yeah. They're, they're yep. basically yeah. pissed that we left them. They yep. were obsessed with controlling culture. And now they've just, like Count Dracula, opened up his cape and just are sending out all the poison gas. Yeah, so just really unhinged crap. Now, he said so much stuff in this live stream, but like I said, I'm not a bigger channel, so I'm not going to get away with it if I play you what he said. YouTube are probably going to flag my content, but go check it out if you want. Now, the stuff he says and the stuff they're all nodding their head about, Hollywood went woke with Obama, I think just plays into a lot of my, like, you know, criticisms of anti SJW um, videos is that they don't really understand anything. Because if if I actually wanted to like play with this answer a bit and and put my head into like the anti SOWs and try and give a convincing answer, there is a very you know convincing answer you can talk about where Hollywood really became more left wing and it's of course with like more guerrilla filmmaking in the sixties and seventies that went mainstream because if you know about the history of Hollywood it used to be controlled by these giant conglomerates and you know of course it is again today. But at the same time, these conglomerates would sign actors to like a five, six picture deal, meaning you could only act in films for that specific studio. It was way more, I guess, divided up between these massive corporations, whereas now it's just basically been taken over by Disney. But there is, you know, some competition and actors are more free to move around. But with the 60s and the 70s, you see a whole wave of filmmakers who are way more openly left-wing, so Martin Scorsese, George Lucas in particular, this guy, you know, who does play a lot with more socialistic themes and stuff. You have people like Francis Ford Coppola with his Godfather movies and Apocalypse Now. You have Oliver Stone, who is more like anti-establishment and anti-imperialism, writing Midnight Express in the late 70s, and then going on to make his Vietnam War movies. So if I was Alex Jones, if I wanted to actually convince people, maybe actually know what you're talking about. But just like Alex Jones, anti-SOWs, 
don't know what they're talking about. Like when they say Star Wars has gone woke. They don't know the guy who wrote it said the rebels were, you know, the Viet Cong, the NL... F in the Vietnam War. And this is just a general problem with these nerds is that they don't understand history, not even history of the things they claim to love. He mentioned someone like Obama just because for a lot of these people, it's a political awakening because they didn't want a black guy as president, essentially. But Hollywood has had a big leftist slant since the 60s and 70s in terms of the talent and the creators, whereas before it was more right wing, but with artistic types, you, you do get a lot of lefties pretty much organically anyway. And then today what you see with so-called woke Hollywood, I wouldn't say it's very woke because it's more diverse. And what these people say were like woke Hollywood and woke Netflix is in my mind ridiculous is because for these corporations, it is like the flavor of the month. These corporations at the end of the day, don't care about woke politics or diversity. A lot of these corporations prop up tons of imperialist propaganda in the form of films. So, you know, the fact that they think Hollywood as an institution is woke is pretty laughable. I, of course, can admit that a lot of the Hollywood types are more liberal. I still wouldn't consider too many people to have the same politics as me. Maybe you have more outspoken people like Susan Sarandon, for example. But even people like Chris Evans, who hate Trump, still then go and star in basically Israeli propaganda. But basically, for the rest of the video, I just thought I would highlight that... Alex Jones appearing on a live stream of these people is not surprising. Now, people like Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers would like you to think that Geeks and Gamers is for everyone. When he got all that criticism for the Zack Snyder stuff, he actually defended himself saying, you know, we have LGBT people in the team, we have women, we have people who don't like Donald Trump. That Geeks and Gamers has a lot of women that are part of the team. Notice how they don't mention that Geeks and Gamers has a lot of people that don't like Trump on the team. Notice how they don't mention that our community manager is a very proud member of the LGBT community. Notice how they don't mention that she's not a fan of Trump. Notice how they don't mention that we literally introduced you to a Muslim female gamer just a few weeks ago. Notice how they don't mention any of these things because the facts don't really matter. But with the channels he controls and even the political angle and the nerd stuff with Geeks and Gamers, the, you know, the main channel, it's heavily focused on right-wing talking points. So these people who work for you editing and making the thumbnails and stuff, maybe they totally agree with what you're saying, but they're still going along with it. Now, Jeremy also has a politics channel called D-Day Cobra. And doing research for this video, I was also surprised to find that the quartering had a politics channel as well. But these guys' videos are already deeply political. But if you see here, they make straight up politics videos. So here's one from a couple days ago. Joe Biden has just made a huge mistake. Another one, Hollywood is now using pronouns for marketing garbage films. So you see, even with his own more political channel, they still focus on the pop culture stuff as well. Mike Pence called traitor during Faith and Freedom Conference. 17K views, pretty funny because most Trump people thought Mike Pence was a traitor anyway. Joe Biden's embarrassing Pennsylvania speech. So this guy also covered the election closely. Democrats attack Barack Obama after he slams defund the police. AOC wears tax the rich dress to 30k Met Gala events. SJWs want Caitlyn Jenner cancelled. And then Alex Jones breaks people again talking about his recent appearance on a live stream with Geeks and Gamers. Stuff about Chris Christie, talking about stuff to do with the election. But I'm not going to play these videos for you today. And for someone else watching this, probably a good thing to make a video on these political channels of these anti-SJWs. But yeah, it's pretty standard stuff. And what I actually see a sentiment with a lot of people is people actually get bored of anti-SJWs because they say the same thing over and over and over again. And it's no different with the politics channels. The conclusions are always pretty much the same. It's like a, a discount Fox News because it doesn't even really mix up the reasons to try and stay relevant and entertaining. Now, Jeremy from The Quartering also has a channel called Midwesterly. And it's pretty much the same as Geeks and Gamers one. I'm not super educated on every single topic, but this channel is really important to me and I know that I will grow and become much more educated on a lot of topics through this channel's existence, through your support, through your kind words, through uh, just the exercise of covering 
news every single day. I feel like we're doing this together. We're having a conversation. I read my YouTube comments. But the problem with this one is the thumbnails are pretty gross as well. So here's some videos. So feminist grift, times up collapses. Yes, Carl Rittenhouse was defending himself. Of course, someone like Jeremy thinks that. Hillary Clinton is about to have a very bad month. These people are still on Hillary Clinton. Joe Biden, unwelcome in New Jersey. Residents boo his motorcade. Uh, this one's really gross. AOC enters therapy over capital incident. AOC gets therapy for fake trauma. So it's probably talking about the trauma she said she experienced because of the event, but also previous trauma. I saw a lot of people try to minimize that even on the left. Uh, I remember defending her for it. So, of course, the court ring said a lot about Afghanistan, which I find funny because, of course, all these Trumpists couldn't wait to get out of Afghanistan. And now they just hate on Joe Biden because he did it and Trump didn't. Obviously supporting the recall against um, Gavin Newsom. Lots of focus on AOC. So have a video about the dress here as well. And, of course, talking about the Cuba stuff, basically saying that Biden doesn't want to help Cubans flee Cuba because they traditionally vote Republican. Now this thumbnail is really, really gross about Noam Chomsky. They basically edited um, a Wehrmacht or an SS hat on this guy. So if you don't think it's problematic, I don't know where you will really draw the line. And these guys like to defend themselves saying they're not bigoted at all, but even just for these thumbnails, it's totally gross. Now just with the quartering, if you ever watch this content, you know where his politics stand. Now, because of the hyper-partisan nature of America, Republicans are in essence a hive mind. There is really no distinction between the politics of Jeremy from The Quartering or Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers because they're all just spouting the same stuff you hear on Fox News about anything. Like you can get all this news from any of these sources, Quartering, Geeks and Gamers, or Fox News, and you're probably gonna end up with the same stuff. There's obviously no nuance here. There's no criticism of the right on these channels at all. There's no criticism of conservatism or, or capitalism. It's all pretty much run of the mill stuff. But of course, like I said, I'm a British person looking at this, and the Overton window in Britain is so much further left, or I guess just kind of like normal for like European countries and other countries, where in America it's so shifted to the right. So a lot of what these guys are saying in these videos to me is just crazy talk. Like everything in American politics since Trump that conservatives support these days is just insane. And like I said, to me, it's far right politics because with Trumpism, what it's done to, I guess, mainstream conservatism is it shifted it so much towards the right. And there's no semblance of pretending to be like for equality or for like helping minorities or being like for women or anything like that. It's just so mask off now. Whereas in the UK, Boris Johnson has to pretend he, you know, he is for women's rights and Muslim rights and cares about the lives of black people and stuff. Of course, I believe he doesn't, but he has to at least pretend because you can't just be completely mask off in other countries where in the US, I feel like with people like Trump, you can. So why this is dangerous, I think, especially for young men, this ecosystem you get into, because I've made videos on this before, specifically with The Last Jedi, but people have spoke to me and they said, the reason I started watching The Quartering or the reason I started watching Geeks and Gamers is because I wanted some of that, I guess, righteous hatred for things like the Game of Thrones season finale or how much the last Jedi divided fans. I wanted this hatred. So I was attracted to these channels because I made a lot of videos talking about why they hated Game of Thrones, why The Last Jedi was such a failure. And then I actually got influenced by their worldview on nerd topics. And I always say that's dangerous because they do look at everything in the world through a far right lens. But then take that even further. If you become a fan of these guys, what you're gonna start watching their politics channels as well. And it's kind of like a Fox News light for YouTube in essence, because if you listen to these two guys talk about Cuba or Afghanistan, how is your view of those situations going to have any nuance? If your view of Cuba is Joe Biden doesn't want to let anyone leave because they're all going to vote Republican in Miami or something, or that flip-flopping on Afghanistan and suddenly, you know, it's a disaster that Joe Biden's leaving, even though you may have supported it when Trump was making deals. But the main thing that makes me a bit hopeful is, like I said, the quartering geeks and gamers, all their channels are very, very similar. And all their videos are very, very similar. 
there isn't an attempt to construct like a video essay or a more coherent argument. It's basically with the nerd stuff, uh, woke politics ruining everything. Um, you know, four in God of War is you know larger now because of woke politics. Uh, one of the frost giants is now a little black girl because of woke politics. If there's any diversity in a movie, woke politics. Shang Chi is woke as well, just for being set in China and stuff. And that's pretty much the extent of the argument. There's no really desire to elaborate. And what they do is just read one article from like that weird anti SAW news site bounding into comics. And it's like an eight minute video where they say the same stuff. And the politics stuff is no different. Read something from Fox News, read something from the Daily Mail or something like that. Make a few little comments and then you just have clickbait. Same conclusions all the time. Joe Biden, radical communist. AOC and Bernie have essentially made the Democrats completely a communist party. And then you just have other stuff about like Joe Biden, and Hillary Clinton. It's all very predictable. But I thought I'd just take this video to highlight some of this stuff and kind of use the Alex Jones thing to frame my argument because there's just no argument against us saying that these channels are so mask off hard right, far right channels and having Alex Jones and nodding along with everything he says is a good indicator of that. But if you just look at their content broadly, it's pretty clear they are. And Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers can talk about how diverse his team is, it doesn't really matter if they're all building a brand which pretty much has you as the main host or Ryan Kinnell or other people who are big Trump supporters talk about all this news and inject their own politics in it. For guys who claim to hate uh, everything being politicized in their nerd media, you seem to love doing the exact same thing while also going on political rants on your other YouTube channels. So that is it for the video. If you want to follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram, come join our communities on Discord and on my subreddit. If you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. And if you made it this far, thank you all for watching.